Hello everybody, this is Akshay over here and uh, welcome to my another video and today we will be discussing about uh, Animal Kingdom Chapter 4 from the Unit 1 of uh, POC first year and in this video we will be mainly discussing about uh, basis of classification and invertebrates So let us begin then Classification is mainly done on certain basis and uh, these are the complete basis of classification, beginning with the levels of organization, symmetry, germ layers, coelom, segmentation, and the notochord. So, levels of organization, every animal is having its own level of organization. For example, the first level of organization is uh, the cellular grade of organization, which is observed in the case of polyferrans. And the next grade of organization is a tissue grade of organization, which is observed in the case of uh, cylindrata and uh, tenophora. And next is uh, organ grade of organization, which is also in the case of platyal menthus. And the highest level of uh, organization we find is the organ system grade of organization, which is found from annelida, phylum annelida and onwards. So the next one is uh, the symmetry. So symmetry is basically the body proportion, right? Some animals do not show any kind of uh, symmetry and we call it as asymmetric in nature. But whereas some organisms do show bilateral symmetry, bilateral symmetry where the body can be divided into two equal halves. Okay, the left half and the right half actually identical to each other. And the next one we are having is the radial symmetry, which is observed in the case of uh, cylindrata, tenophora, and uh, even echinodermata. Right. So the axis, uh, the the axis that uh, cuts the organism should pass through the central axis of the body. Such kind of uh, symmetry is called as the radial symmetry. And the next one we are having is the germ layers. The development of an any organism may be from two germ layers or maybe from three germ layers. And if it is from two germ layers, we refer it as uh, diploblastic. And if it is from three germ layers, it, we call it as the diploblastic. So the diagram A is mainly referring for the diploblastic and the diagram B mainly refers to the triploblastic in nature. So we are actually having three germ layers. It is called as the ectoderm, endoderm and the mesoderm. In the case of uh, diploblastic organisms, you find only uh, two germ layers, that is the ectoderm and the endoderm. Only in the case of uh, triploblastic organisms, you find all the three germ layers, that is the endoderm, ectoderm and the mesoderm. So in the case of diploblastic organisms, you find a special kind of undifferentiated layer which is present between the ectoderm and the endoderm and we refer it as the mesoglia. Uh, moving on, we are having uh, next one is called as the coelom or the commonly called as the body cavity. So, some animals have a true body cavity. They are, they are, they are called as the coelomates. What do we mean by the term coelomate? Is that the body cavity should be lined with the internal body wall cavity and uh, the surface of the organs should be lined with the coelomic epithelium and this coelomic epithelium should be derived from mesoderm. Uh, some organisms do have body cavity but it is not derived from the coelomic epithelium and the mesoderm is scattered in the form of pouches and we refer it as a pseudo -coelom. But whereas certain organisms do not have any kind of body cavity and we refer them as uh, a -coelomates. The next one is the segmentation also called as the metamerism where the body is uh, uh, divisible into series of segments externally and also internally. The last one we are having is the notochord and notochord is an exclusive character of uh, mainly chordates. Okay, notochord is mainly a rod-like rigid structure which provides mechanical support to the body. So moving on, uh, here this uh, table, this chart mainly shows all the le uh, levels of organization, symmetry, body coelom, uh, body cavity or coelom and next is the phylums or the representatives which show all these kinds of basis of classification. So you can see that uh, animalia which is having the cellular grade of organization but uh, no symmetry and uh, no body cavity they are called as the poriferans. Now animals which are having tissue grade of organization and uh, radial symmetry and diploblastic in nature we call them as cylindrates and one more is the tenophora. So next is organ grade of organization and a bilateral symmetry uh, and uh, triploblastic but no body cavity platyal menthus are uh, examples for this and uh, organ system grade of organization bilateral symmetry triploblastic in nature and uh, having false coelom we refer them as ascalmenthus phylum ascalmenthus mainly comes into this category finally organ system grade of organization bilateral symmetry but true coelom and being triploblastic 
Anilida, Orthopoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata, Hemichordata and Chordata come into this particular category. Remember that Echinoderms are very interesting organisms because the adult shows radial symmetry but whereas the larval stages mainly show bilateral symmetry. Remember, important point. So we will begin with the uh, phylum porifera uh, and we will be mainly focusing on most important points of all the phylums. The general characteristics of a phylum porifera are that the body is covered by numerous pores and that is called as the ostea. The minute pores are called as the ostea and uh, a single large opening is called as the osculum. You find that uh, there is a uh, water canal system which allows the water to enter into the body through ostea and escape from the body through the osculum. So the main importance of the water canal system is to capture the food and for respiration purpose. And you also find uh, the body cavity here, but we refer it as a spongocele. Do not confuse it with the pseudocelom or coelomids. So the spongocele is actually lined by a special kind of cells called as the coenocytes. Their main function is to collect the food particles. And the digestion is mainly intracellular in nature. The skeletal elements or the molecules which mainly form the skeletal system in the case of porifera are the spongial fibers and the spicules. They are mainly hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite mainly refers to both male and female reproductive structures present in the same organism. The fertilization is uh, internal in, in this case and development is indirect, means presence of larval stages. Examples mainly include uh, Cycon, also called a Cypha, Euspongia, the common name is bath sponge and finally the spongilla. Remember, spongilla is the only freshwater living individual. Remaining all are actually marine in nature. So the next phylum we will be looking into is uh, the phylum Silenfrata, also called as the Nidaria. The name is mainly derived from a unique type of cells you find in these organisms called as the nidoblasts or nidocytes. So they are mainly helping in uh, offense and defense mechanism and in anchorage. They are also called as the stinging cells. Nidoblasts and nidocytes are also called as the stinging cells because they have uh, a harpoon-like structure in them which is ejected when these stinging cells come in contact with any organism. So you also find a cavity here called as the gastrovascular cavity. We can refer it somewhat equivalent to that of a stomach and uh, this uh, gastrovascular cavity opens into mouth which is present on the hypostome and uh, Corals are examples for uh, the phylum cylindrata and in the corals you find that the skeletal system is mainly made up of the calcium carbonate. The digestion may be extracellular or also intracellular. One of the interesting aspect is that the cylindrates are mainly found in two forms. One is a polyp form, another one is medusa form. So the polyp mainly reproduces asexually to give medusa and medusa reproduces sexually to give the polyp. Remember, polyp are mainly cylindrical in body structure and they are sessile in nature. They do not move from one place to another. They are sessile, completely sessile. And uh, medusa are free swimming and having umbrella-like body structure. So, this alteration of generation from a polyp to medusa and medusa to polyp, this alteration of generation is called as the metagenesis. So some representatives, some examples of phylum cylindrata is uh, Physalia, is called as the, it is called as the Portuguese man of war, and uh, Adamsia, that is a sea animal, and next uh, we are having is the Panachula, also called as uh, sea pen, and uh, Gorgonium, or also called as Gorgonia, it is a sea fan, and next is uh, Midrina, also called as the brain coral, next is Obelia, remember Obelia is an individual, which shows both forms, that is both polyp and also medusa forms are found in the obelia. Next is aurelia. Aurelia is actually a medusa form, remember this. And finally hydra. Hydra is a polyp form. Even adamsia is also a polyp form, remember. Moving on, uh, we are having the next phylum that is the phylum tenophora. So they are commonly called as the sea walnuts or comb jelly. The most distinguishing character, the most unique character is you find the presence of eight rows of ciliated comb plates which are mainly meant for locomotion and they also exhibit bioluminescence. The ability to produce light is called as bioluminescence. They are again uh, hermaphrodite in nature, external fertilization and indirect development is observed. Examples are pleurobranchia and uh, tenoplana are two examples belonging to the phylum tenophora.
So the next uh, is the phylum uh, Platyhelminthes. The most uh, featuring characteristics of uh, phylum Platyhelminthes is that they are called as flat forms. Why? Because uh, the body is also ventrally flattened. And majority of these organisms are parasites in nature. Very hardly you find a few of them are free living in nature. So in the case of parasites, you find a special structures called as the hooks and suckers which help in adhering to the body of the host organism. You find flame cells and flame cells are mainly meant for uh, the osmoregulation and uh, excretion. So they are again hermaphrodite in nature and uh, internal fertilization and uh, indirect development. So the examples are uh, tinea and uh, fasciola. Tinea is called as the tapeworm and fasciola is called as the lever fluke. The two diagrams what you people are looking over here on your screen. So moving on, uh, the next one is the phylum Ascalmanthus. So they are generally referred as the roundworms. They are again uh, aquatic uh, or terrestrial. They may be free living. Even you find parasitic forms. So here you find a complete digestive system. In the case of platyhelminthes, the digestive system is incomplete. Okay, so complete digestive system means presence of uh, mouth and uh, finally presence of another opening that is the anus. They are sexually dimorphic in nature. Dimorphic in nature means both males and females are separate and they can be easily distinguished. Okay, and when the males and females are completely separate, we also use one more term called as the dioecious. And how do you identify the males and females? Females are slightly longer than the males. So fertilization is internal and uh, development is a direct or indirect. So some examples of phylum Ascalmanthes are Ascaris called as the round worm. It causes Ascariasis. The next one is the Encyclostoma which is also called as the hook worm. And finally the last one is the area. It causes Phyleriasis also called as the Elephantiasis. The next one we are having is the phylum uh, Annelida. So phylum Annelida is the first uh, that shows metamerism. Body is externally segmented. Its main characters mainly include that. Some of them are aquatic, terrestrial also. And they are uh, free living and also parasitic forms are found. The locomotive structures are called as the parapodia. And you will find parapodia in the case of Neris. And uh, the circulatory system is a closed type of circulatory system. Remember if the blood is flowing inside blood vessels such kind of circulatory system is called as a closed circulatory system but whereas if the blood is directly flowing into the body cavity that is the coelom where the tissues and uh, body organs are weighted with the blood such kind of circulatory system is called as the open type of circulatory system so again here the digestive system is complete and for excretion you find a structure called as the nephridia the nervous system is very advanced Okay, because you find a paired ganglia which is mainly connected to the double ventral nerve cord by the help of lateral nerves. Again, the reproduction method is sexual mode and uh, some examples are neris which is dioecious, which is dioecious means unisexual and uh, ferichima that is the earthworm is monoecious means bisexual or hermaphrodite and uh, hyrodinaria is also monoecious or hermaphrodite. Hyrodinaria means leech. So the next one we are having is the phylum Orthropoda. So the phylum Orthropoda is mainly characterized by presence of jointed appendages. And body is mainly divisible into three regions that is the head, thorax and the abdomen. The respiratory structures are very diverse. In some cases, some organisms you find book gills, book lungs and uh, gills and also tracheal system. Tracheal system is mainly found in the case of insects, uh, for example, cockroach. Gills is mainly found in the case of aquatic arthropods, for example, lobster or prawn. Book lungs is mainly found in the case of arachnida. An example for arachnida is a scorpion. And book gills is mainly found in the case of uh, primitive arthropods such as uh, limulus. The circulatory system is of uh, open type and they have exoskeleton. The exoskeleton is mainly made up of chitin. Hence, it is referred as chitinous exoskeleton. Advanced uh, sense organs are also present such as antenna and eyes. They also exhibit uh, balancing organs or also called as the statocysts are also present. Excretion is uh, by a unique uh, structure called as the mulfigin tubules. They are again unisexual. Fertilization is internal. Development may be direct or indirect. Some examples or representatives of phylum orthropoda. The first category is the economically important insects. 
Okay, the examples mainly include Apis, that is the honeybee, Bombyx, that is the silk moth, and finally the Lacifer, or also called as the lac insect. Vectors. Vectors, we are mainly referring to the animals or the organisms that mainly spread the disease. So, examples mainly include three different species of mosquitoes only, that is the Anopheles, Aedes, and Culex. These three are different uh, species of mosquitoes. Next is gregarious pests, that is they mainly feed on the crops. An example for this is the locusta. Finally, we are having is the living fossil. An example for living fossil is the limulus. Living fossil mainly refers to the organism which have remained unchanged through the course of time. Okay, generally they exhibit a very primitive body plants. So, the next one we are having is the phylum mollusca. The general characters are uh, the body is mainly covered by shell and the body is completely unsegmented. The body is divisible into head, muscular foot and visceral hump. Gills are the main uh, respiratory structures and also aid in uh, or also help in uh, excretion. Gill is mainly present in the mantle cavity. The mouth is also having a phyla-like uh, rasping organ called as the radula. So, some examples are uh, pila, pila globosa that is called as the apple snail. Next is uh, pintada that is uh, pearl oyster. Next is uh, sepia also called as the cuttlefish. Next is loligo that is a squid. Uh, the next one is octopus and uh, later one is aplysia called as the sea slug. Next is uh, dentalium called as the tusk shell. And finally, we are having is the Ketopleura, that is the chiton. Finally, moving on, that is uh, phylum Echinodermata, the last uh, phylum in the invertebrata. And uh, their general characteristics are, uh, again you find uh, presence of exoskeleton and this uh, exoskeleton is mainly made up of calcareous ossicles. The mouth is mainly present on the ventral side and uh, dorsal side you find the anus. In the case of Echinodermata, you find a water vascular system. Okay. And water vascular system is mainly meant for transportation of all molecules, digestion, respiration and locomotion and all. And uh, you don't find a dedicated excretory system. They are mainly unisexual, external fertilization and indirect development and larvae are mainly free swimming. So remember, I would like to make this point again clear. Phylum echinodermata, adult forms of echinodermata, they mainly show radial symmetry. But whereas the larval stages show bilateral symmetry. Examples uh, that come into the phylum Echinodermata are the Astrias, that is the sea star, and next is the Echinus, that is the sea urchin, next is Antedon, called as the sea lily, Ophiura, also called as the brittle star, and finally Cucumeria, also called as the sea cucumber. So, students uh, and also the viewers, I want to make it very clear that you people have to remember the common names and also scientific names which are coming into each and every phylum. The pattern of question generally in this chapter is going to be match the following. They will give, they may give the scientific name or they may give common name and you have to match to the respective phylum to it. So I will end the video here itself. Uh, if you found this video very much helpful then do like it and uh, share it among your friends and finally subscribe to this particular channel and express your opinion in the comment section. Thank you.